Hey guys, welcome to the second part of my Hunter Class Mechanics Guide. Today we're going to be talking about um, three important topics to master for your hunter. Again, it's not each one of these things by themselves is useful, but not that important. It really becomes important when you start using these things together to, for, to your advantage. So the first thing you talk about is a pet. So this is my pet. I've tamed him. You have to level up pets in Classic WoW. They don't automatically raise to your level. So if you go tame a level 2 scorpion, you're going to have to level them up to level 60. Um, this is the pet action bar. There's a lot of useful macros that I would recommend. If you're getting more into this, you check out. That helps you control your pet. But surficially, and what you're going to be using mostly when you start playing a hunter, uh, the, the three things you need to keep in mind, probably the most important, is the stance your pet is in. So aggressive stance means that my pet will automatically acquire any valid targets in its aggro range. This can be useful in certain situations. However, I have never put my pet in aggressive stance. And whatever you do, do not go to a dungeon, a five-man dungeon or a raid with your pet on aggressive. That's the number one way to get called out as a huntar is if your pet is just pulling mob after mob after pack and wiping your group because you have no control over it and the tank doesn't even know what's going on. Defensive stance means that if you or your pet are attacked, they will defend themselves. And passive, which is the preference and when you get more comfortable playing your hunter class, I would recommend leaving your pet on passive. Passive just means you have to order commands directly to your pet for it to act. And this gives the most control over what you're doing. And Mastering your pet in passive stance means that you have full control over both your character and your pet. And that will just come with practice and time. It's not that big of a deal. In fact, it, you'll get it down in muscle memory pretty quickly. You have attack, so I can issue an attack order to my pet, which means it will attack my tab target, my selected target. You have return, which means you can call it back to you. Or actually, it's follow just meaning that your pet will return to your location and follow you. And you have stay, which just means your pet will hold its ground, essentially. And you can run around and it'll just chill. And then you can follow to bring it back to you. I would recommend binding these to some keys. Um, it just makes control that much easier. And then there's special abilities. One of these videos, will I'll be talking about every pet family in particular. Pet families matter a lot. Not only do different pet families have different stat modifiers, meaning higher attack, lower attack, higher health, lower health, or higher armor and lower armor. Um, and then also special abilities that certain pet families can, can use. And each pet family, well, most pet families have special tools uh, that you can use. And we'll be covering each one of those later because uh, there's a place for almost every pet family depending on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, and what your goals are. So that's the basics of pets. Um, obviously this is pretty superficial. The one important thing to note is that you and your pet both have um, separate aggro tables. So if I send my pet in to attack it, I'm invisible into, to, to that courser until I actually attack it and vice versa. But we'll get into that more later. The next big topic is traps. Now, traps in vanilla WoW, contrary to, to retail WoW or modern WoW, however you want to say it, traps can only be used out of combat. And they have no cast range, meaning if I use this freezing trap, it'll just appear directly in front of me. I can't propel it to a target location. Um, I can't manipulate it in any way. And for it to activate, I have to bring this courser over it. And there's a little radius. You don't have to get it perfectly over it. It will activate. Now there's many different trap types. There's a freezing trap. I've, I'm gonna kind of be breezed by the tooltips because that's something you can understand. What's more important is their effect. There's a freezing trap, which is basically a long-term CC up to 20, 26 seconds. I believe I have a increased duration on that through my talents. A frost trap, which is an AOE slow. An immolation trap, which is a damage over time effect. It doesn't scale with uh, spell power or anything like that, so the later in the game you progress, the less useful it becomes just because it doesn't scale. 
like a warlock's corruption damage over time would scale and be useful at all points, but for the most part, Immolation Trap is not that useful. You also have something called an Explosive Trap, which is an AoE version. It's a burst, and then it also puts a dot on it. So this is useful during big pools and big packs if you just want to get a little bit of extra burst. But for the most part, how you're going to stand out from other hunters is your ability to use Freezing Trap effectively. And I'm going to do a little demonstration here. The most important thing to, real, to remember is that it has to actually step on your trap. And you have to be out of combat. Which means before you start the pool, let's just say you're in dungeon group and you have a marked target, the tank usually it's... Um, Usually it's a blue square, at least in my experience they do a blue square just because it visually resembles it. Traps are not as versatile as, say, something like a polymorph. Polymorph can be used in combat, um, can be reapplied. It's more versatile, but polymorph can only affect one target per mage. Meanwhile, traps can affect... You can have multiple targets trapped. But you see I've laid one down, and if I try to lay another one down, my first one disappears. So we're dealing with some pretty large constraints here. I have to be out of combat. I have to bring the target to the trap. And I can only have one trap down. But if you play around with your class mechanics, which I'll show you shortly, you can effectively CC two or three mobs at a time. And it take all the CC uh, weight for your group on yourself. And I can guarantee you the fastest way to make friends, get invited to a guild, or stand out uh, amongst a group is being an effective trapper. And I'll just demonstrate. Usually when I'm pulling a mob, some people recommend using Arcane Shot. I like Distracting Shot because it generates a lot of aggro. And if one of my healers throws off a big heal and pulls aggro away, it can become a mess. So I prefer just to use the safe method, Distracting Shot, to get a bulk aggro on the target to make sure that my healers are covered just gonna run away because I got other stuff to tell you so we're dealing with a lot of constraints here winning groups the most the bet you can be an effective hunter just by pre trapping before a pool when the tank pulls you distracting shot your mark target and bring it to your trap for the most part if you do that you're in good shape you're gonna be accepted in groups you're gonna be a valuable member of the group as long as you can reliably hit that Frost traps can be resisted. All traps can be resisted. So the there's going to be times where your trap resists and there's nothing you can do about it and it's going to seem like chaos. Just let your group know that that happens. It's usually on, in Classic Wilds, a pretty tight-knit community, so they will understand, especially if you're consistently trapping correctly every once in a while. You can always expect one to resist and you just have to be prepared to deal with it. Now, if you keep bunking up your, your freezing trap, and you mess it up, don't use the excuse that it was resisted because that might you might save face for, you know, that pool or the next couple pools if you just blame it on resist. However, if it's if someone notices that you messed it up and you're claiming that it resisted, it's not good for your overall reputation. So just take the just take the fall when you mess it up. Be honest when it resists and just try to get better and Pretty soon you'll have a reputation for being a reliable hunter. So the next thing before we start combining all these things we've learned is we're going to do a, uh, I'm going to talk to you about Feign Death. So Feign Death, I'll use it here just to demonstrate, you pretend to die. Your health and mana drop to zero, but the most important part is that it removes you instantly, just you, it doesn't remove your pet, from combat. This might seem kind of lame, and while you're leveling, you'll find most use of it. If you pull too many mobs, you can essentially reset the fight by feigning death. But the most important part is it drops you out of combat, even if you're in group in a group with people that are in combat. What this means is that, first off, when you drop out of combat, you can then begin using traps again. So you can use a trap instantly from feign death. You can also drink and... Uh, drink for mana and eat for HP and this actually works in raids so if you're killing Ragnaros well maybe that's a bad example 
if you're killing Magmadar or something and you run out of mana, hunters have mana, remember, so you do have to watch your mana usage, you can drop out of combat, eat and drink up to full, and then re-enter combat, essentially giving you a fresh start. If it's a really long fight, this means that you have... it's Think of it almost like an evocation, but a little bit more limited. Um, however, most use and how you'll really start to understand why hunters are so powerful is combining feign death with traps. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to combine the functionality of freezing trap and feign death. Now, a lot of people... Again, if you just want to pre-trap the pool, that's fine. That's why you're there. That's easy. But if you want to ramp it up, and I recommend practicing in this in the open world, is it's actually possible to trap two targets, and actually sometimes even three, depending on the pool, using the functionality of your feign death with freezing trap. So I'm going to pull these two mobs. I'm going to pretend like one of these is my pet is the tank of the group, and he's marked me two targets. So I'm going to distracting shot, my first marked target. Got him. And then for my second trap target, I can feign death and trap him. So what I have here is I've trapped two targets for up to 25 seconds. So doing just simply doing a double trap like this really gets you a lot of attention in groups. And if you can do it reliably, you're going to be um, in demand as a hunter. And it's pretty simple. Now, there's a you you can get more fancy with this, and I'm not going to get into it too much. But I would recommend practicing your double traps because it takes a lot of pressure off your group if you can reliably do it. Again, if one resists, you know it is what it is. Just be honest. But over the course of a dungeon, you're going to have many times to reliably do this, and really uh, people are going to notice because it's hard to miss two big giant ice blocks of two controlled targets in the middle of a pool. There are ways to trap three targets, and there's actually a way to CC four mobs at a time if you get Wyvern Sting, but I would not recommend Wyvern Sting because of other issues that we can talk about later. Um, now, you can double, you can trap one target, pre trap, and just do one. You can double trap, which is pretty useful, and with practice, you can get it down really reliably. And you, you can actually CC up to three mobs reliably using your pet. Your pet in a, in a dungeon gives a lot of damage, but it's also a soak. And if your party members aren't taking damage and your pet's taking the damage instead, that's a win for your group for sure. Because your pet is pretty tanky. It's got high HP. It's got high armor. It's tanky. It can survive and you can mend it. So if there's a pool where there needs to be three mobs and you're not sure you can triple trap, but you feel good about double trapping, you can tell your tank, hey, let my let my pet. Communication is key in a dungeon. So you can say, I'm going to double trap, mark me two targets, and my pet can soak. And you can actually in a dungeon put your pet, have, make it have growl so it can hold aggro. And I'll, then I'll show you an example of CCing three mobs for an extended period of time. So what I've done here is I have three CC targets. The only thing that's taken damage is my pet. So this is three elite mobs that your group doesn't have to worry about for a very long time. So that's the basics of Fain, death, and trapping, you can see it can be very powerful and very useful, and groups are going to love you because it takes a lot of pressure off healers. Combined with a polymorph or any other CC, like I said in my last video, a single hunter can completely change the pace of an entire dungeon. Um, so that's my intro to trapping and feign death. Uh, the longer you do this, the more comfortable you're going to get. The combinations, there's a lot of different combinations that you can use to trap effectively and you can get pretty fancy with it. And I've seen some really cool hunter plays. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is just take a group of two or three hunters into a level 60 dungeon and just kill mobs one by one and see how we can control the pace of the entire dungeon with only hunters, no healers, no tanks. Because you have the toolkit. This is what makes hunters special. Um, I encourage you, again, this is just a primer, I encourage you to see what you can do. 
now that you kind of see how these things can chain together. My next video is going to be a little different. In my next video, I'm going to highlight uh, talent points, not necessarily talent points, but talent abilities that can be used in very uh, effective ways that you want to keep your eye on. I'm not going to go over all the hunter class abilities, especially the most basic ones, because there's enough resources out there. Um, a lot of people say that there's not much versatility when it comes to talent specking. Uh, I disagree. In fact, you can talent specifically to overcome certain situations or be the best at certain things. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, Cork here again. Just as an addendum, I'm going to put this at the end of my last video. I mentioned how pets and uh, the hunter have separate aggro tables. Uh, I'll demonstrate why that could be useful, why that's important, uh, just briefly, just to see, uh, just get, get your mind running about the possibilities. So I'm going to pull a bunch of mobs just with my hunter. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm gonna, so, sorry, I'm like summoning all my words. So I'm gonna pretend like you just pulled, you're just like way in over your head, but you have a quest target. So you pull the big pack, there's four people you're getting beat the shit out of, and you've pulled way too many mobs, but you still want to kill one target. So I have aggro on all four of these mobs, but my pet doesn't have any aggro. So I can issue an order to my pet to attack this Chimera, and then I can feign death. And the two deer will run away, because they my pet's not on their aggro table, only on the Chimera's aggro table. I'm left with just my kill target. So just a brief demonstration of how this can be useful. This is really important, uh, especially when you're killing a humanoid. Gotta feed my pet, make sure he's happy. He, he likes bread. Um, this is mostly useful in humanoid camps on quests or even in dungeons where there's a large pack of mobs around a specific kill target or where there's four or five mobs that are all chained together and you can only take one or two at a time. And other classes would be shit out of luck here. They could try to kite, you know, they could try to burst the kill target before they die. Hunters, you can just pull the whole pack, get aggro with your pet on one target, feign death, and the others will chain back. Um, this is probably the only functionality in the entire game, specifically because it relies on having a pet and it relies on having a combat drop. So rogues can't do this, they have Fanish, but they don't have a pet. Warlocks can't do this, they have a pet, but they don't have fan Vanish or Feign Death. So uh, this is the only way that you can split mobs that are chained together into discrete packs. Um, this, I'm not going to say any much more than that, but this might come in handy. Well, I'm not going to say much else. This, you can exploit certain game mechanics or clever use of game mechanics because these are things built into your kit to take advantage of certain uh, AI limitations that other classes might run into. So that's it.